Around the United States, there is outrage over the police shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. Maybe because it isn't the first time an unarmed black man has been gunned down by cops for what appears to be little reason. Protesters have called for justice to be served. But will it be? Looking back might give us a clue. So here are four infamous police brutality cases in the United States and what happened to the cops involved. Rodney King. His case put U.S. police brutality on the radar for an entire nation. Can we all get along? In 1991, he was beaten by four white LAPD officers after a high-speed chase. If it hadn't been taped, King probably would have been just another black man brutalized by the cops. But it was. Still, that didn't stop a jury from acquitting the officers of all criminal charges, leading to the L.A. riots, some of the worst in U.S. history. These people are angry, and they have every right to be. The LAPD did, however, make some changes, adding more diversity to the then 59% white force, and the city got a new police chief. Smart. King sued Los Angeles and won, and in 1993, two of the four officers were convicted of violating King's civil rights in a federal case. They were sentenced to 30 months, which they served. 41. That's the number of bullets police fired at Amadou Diallo in front of his apartment building. He was 22 and unarmed. The plainclothes officers, who all happened to be white, thought he had a gun. It was actually his wallet. A year later, they were all found not guilty of criminal charges, and not one of the officers had to resign. So what happened? The jurors did not want to believe that what they did was criminal. They viewed it as a mistake. There was a bit more justice, though, in New York City policing. The street crime unit that the officers were a part of, whose creepy slogan was, we own the night, was disbanded. The city started recruiting more black and Latino officers. And for the first time, the police had to release data on its stops and arrests, specifically when it came to race. Fast forward seven years. 23-year-old Sean Bell was celebrating his last night as a bachelor in Queens, New York. Five plainclothes cops in unmarked cars fired 50 shots into Bell's car, killing him and wounding two friends. They thought the group had a gun. They thought wrong. Three of them were charged and found not guilty of criminal charges. But in the years that followed, one was fired and the others were forced to resign from the force. Still, only one was denied a pension. So was justice actually served? New Year's Day 2009. Oscar Grant was shot in the back by an Oakland Transit police officer, even though he was already in handcuffs and lying face down on the ground. The officer said he confused his gun for a taser. The incident was filmed by onlookers with camera phones and spread quickly online. Grant died the next day and Oakland erupted in protests and riots. The officer, Johannes Meserly, was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and got the minimum sentence of two years in prison. But he was released 11 months later on parole. John Burris, attorney for Grant's family, explained why cases like his are hard to win. The vast majority of people who serve on the juries are basically pro-police. And it's very difficult for them to rule against a police officer for conduct that happened in the course of their work. Grant, along with Bell, Diallo, and King are all symbols of the ongoing fight against police brutality for every generation. The common thread? Excessive force and little accountability. Will we ever come up with a way to cancel Cops Gone Wild? And when will communities be able to end their cry, no justice, no peace? No justice! No peace! No justice! Subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook.